Okay, welcome back. This is a video for the Rygate College Maths post-Easter work, looking at sequences and series. This time we're focusing on geometric sequences. So, geometric sequences and arithmetic sequences are linked, but they do things in different ways. So an arithmetic sequence, as we saw last time, was something like this. 3, 7, 11, and so on. Where we're adding the same number every time. So the difference between arithmetic and geometric is instead of adding, we are multiplying. So something along the lines of this. 3, 6, 12, 24. That is geometric. Okay? Because we are timesing by 2. every time. That makes this geometric. Okay. Now, much like arithmetic sequences and series, we still need to worry about the first term. And we still call it A. However, this is a common difference because we are subtracting one term from its next one. Here we are dividing one term by its preceding one. That makes this a common ratio. Which we call R. Now, a common ratio doesn't have to be an integer, doesn't have to be positive. This is a geometric se uh, sequence. Our common ratio is 2. This is another geometric series sequence. Our common ratio here is minus 2. This is another the common ratio here is a half. Now we can see here we are swapping between positive and negative. That means this is also known as an alternating geometric sequence. Here, each number is getting closer and closer to zero. It's decreasing, but it is also converging. because it is getting close to some number. In this case, it's converging to zero. Every The next one would be a quarter, then an eighth, then one over 16. Each number is getting closer and closer to zero. The number is called the limit that's not really something we have to worry about at all for this specification. If a sequence is not converging, then we say it is diverging. OK. 
Okay, so these two geometric sequences here are both diverging. They're not getting closer and closer to a particular number. They're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Or in this case, flipping further and further away from zero. So, like before, we can look at deriving the formula for an nth term. We know that the first term is a. The second term is a times the common ratio. The third term is the second term times the common ratio and so on. So the nth term is a times r to the n minus 1. So very similar in idea to arithmetic sequences, but we've got this idea of multiplication. This is the thing that is the same for both the n minus 1 idea and the a. Like before, you need to learn that. So, this means we can work out terms of a geometric sequence. So let's say we've got the sequence 3, 6, 9, oops, 3, 6, 12, 24, like I said before. So we've already identified that the first term is a, so a is 3. The common ratio r is 2, because we're timesing by 2. So the nth term, which is a r to the n minus 1, is going to be 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. Now careful. Because I know some students still struggle with laws of indices. This is not 6 to the n minus 1. Do not do this. It's three times two to the n minus one. Remember your laws of your bod mass or bid mass, powers, indices, order, before multiplication. Two to the n minus one, then times by three. So the tenth term, for instance, is going to be three times two to the nine. Which comes out as 1536. Now, the thing with geometric sequences and geometric series, because we've got this idea of multiplying by a number, often the numbers we get are going to be much, much bigger than those for arithmetic sequences and arithmetic series. Don't panic, that's just the way it is. So let's look at a more problem-solving type question. The second term of a geometric sequence is 4. The fourth term is 8. Given that The common ratio is positive 5nd the exact value
of the 11th term. So, much like before, this is very, very similar to one of the problem solving questions that we did on the last video with arithmetic sequences and series. Okay, and actually the ideas are very, very similar as well. First things first, let's write down what we know. We know that u2 is 4, and we know that u4 is 8. We're trying to find u11, which we know is a r to the 10. We need A and R, so let's write these in terms of A and R. Oh look, we're doing simultaneous equations again. But instead of subtracting, let's do U4 divided by U2. Why do we want to do that? it's going to cancel out the A's. We're going to get 8 over 4. So we get R squared is 2. Which means that R is root 2. Normally we need to worry about plus or minus, but that's where this comes in We don't need to worry about it. This tells us that a is 4 over root 2, which is 2 root 2. So therefore, the 11th term is 2 root 2 times root 2 to the 10. which you stick in your calculator and you get 64 root 2. One more problem solving question before I set you some questions from the textbook. For a geometric progression, we're going to use the same one again. For this geometric progression, what is the first term to exceed 1 million? So, we are trying to find the n such that this is true. Okay, so what n gives us this identity? Now, because we've already done this, we know that the nth term is 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so we know that 2 to the n minus 1 is greater than a million over 3. Now, you have to be really careful with these questions. We can see if this was an equation, this would be a relatively straightforward logs question because we want to know what's in the power, so we need to use logs. However, because we've got an inequality 
you need to be careful about how you rearrange with logs. So although sometimes it will just work taking log base 2 of both sides here, the problem with the inequality when we start to divide things is you need to know whether the thing you're dividing by is negative or not because that affects this. In this case it's not but you need to be careful. So it's much better just to take logs of both sides. Okay, so we get n minus 1 log 2 greater than log of this mass. Log 2, because this is an is greater than 1, this is definitely a positive number. So we know log, so it's, sorry, we know n minus 1 has got to be greater than 18.35, which means n has got to be greater than 19.35, n has to be an integer. We want the first number where this is true. So n could be 400. For n with n as 400, this is this definitely exceeds a million. But we want the first term, which is going to be the twentieth term. This is very typical with sequences and series for geometric, okay, the idea of using logs. So, to practice, exercise 3C, which is on page 69 to 70. Question 1. Question three, question four, six, eight and nine. And thirteen. Question 13 is very similar to this one. So, once you're done with those, watch the next video, which will be on geometric series.